Now then, as you probably know, development across the world is very uneven. So we've actually got some very poor countries across the world, as well as some very rich, more developed countries. Now what you need to know is how we can reduce that gap between the most developed countries and the least developed countries, how we can reduce the development gap. So I'm going to tell you some strategies that we can use to reduce that gap. Now the first strategy that you can use to reduce the development gap is quite obvious, it's just aid. And that is when a country or a charity such as Oxfam donates resources to another country to help it develop or improve people's lives. Now obviously these resources could be in the form of things like food and water, but it could also be things like laptops or um, equipment that people can use to build houses from, etc. Now this can obviously be very successful in improving people's quality of life especially if you're giving them clean water and food. However, this money can be wasted and it might run out. And at the same time, people might actually become dependent on aid and therefore not be able to fend for themselves. Now, there's a few different types of aid that you need to know about. First, we've got short-term aid, which is obviously aid which is more immediate in the short term, such as supplies of food and water after a natural disaster. Then we've got long-term aid, which as you can guess, is aid that's a bit longer lasting. It's things like building schools or water pumps that will help a community for a longer period of time. Then you've got uh, bilateral aid. That's when a country directly gives aid to another country. And you've got multilateral aid, and that is when a country, like a rich country, will give an organisation such as the World Bank some money, and the World Bank will then redistribute that aid. Um, the last two we've got is Tide Aid, and that is, so Tide Aid is when you give a country some money on the provision that they do something in return. And that could be in the form of debt relief, where you pay off a country's debt, and then that country will have to then protect the rainforest, for example, in return. And then finally, you've got Voluntary Aid, and that is when people in a country will donate voluntarily to a uh, charity, such as Comic Relief, and then that charity will then um, provide the aid to the people who need it. So there you go, that's aid for you. Now the second way to reduce the development gap is through investment. And this involves transnational companies, um, which are companies that have parts of their business in more than one country. It involves attracting those businesses to a particular country. And the idea is that when these big businesses um, set up operations in a particular country. They will employ people and these people will then pay taxes which will help the government with uh, paying for things like healthcare and infrastructure. So the idea is that this transnational company will positively impact the country and help development there. Now the only issue with this is that sometimes that's not quite the case and that this company might exploit the natural resources in a particular country and make people live in quite poor living conditions. However, one place this has been a success is in Nigeria, where the Shell, Shell Oil Company has employed hundreds of thousands of people and helped to improve development there. Right, now the third strategy which can be used to reduce the development gap is something called intermediate technology. And as you can see, this is where you provide local people with tools or machines which are quite simple to use, affordable and cheap to maintain. And the idea is that this, with this technology, the local people will be able to take ownership of the project and will be able to help improve their own quality of life. Now, the idea with this is that if you provided these local people with something like a tractor, then realistically, they're probably not going to be able to use it very well. And they're not going to be able to maintain it very easily. Whereas if you provide something like a water pump or some simple farm tools, the local people will be able to use those successfully and sustainably over a long period of time. So therefore, it can be a success. So as I say, Water Aid has uh, provided lots of people with a hand pump, which provides local people in countries like Tanzania with fresh water 
and that can therefore improve people's lives there. Now, one problem with these can be is that some of these projects are quite poorly managed and they might not meet the needs of the local community. Right, now the fourth strategy which can be used to reduce the development gap is debt relief. And this is where a government or organisation might pay off a country's debt. You might say, there you go, I'll pay off your debt, you don't owe me any money. And that will allow that country to spend the little money it has on trying to improve the country in terms of healthcare, education, rather than worrying about that money that they may be owed another country. And this can therefore lead to a very good um, positive impact on a country's development. Um, an example of this is um, Zambia had $4 billion worth of debt cancelled in 2005. And by 2006, it was able to start up its own free healthcare system. And it wouldn't have been able to do that if its debt wasn't cancelled. Now, one possible problem of this strategy, though, is that sometimes the money isn't used um, very well. It might be used wrongly by the government and it might lead to like a lack of incentive. So what incentive have you got to pay off your debt if other countries are getting theirs paid off anyway? Now, moving on quickly to strategy number five. This is something that you probably know about and it's fair trade. And this is about giving farmers in LICs and NEEs a fair price for their products. And by selling products that are marketed as fair trade, the farmers get more money, therefore that improves their quality of life. Um, and therefore that can impact on a great number of people in certain countries. Um, we've got examples of this, like obviously bananas, chocolate, certain types of foods can be fair trade. Um, and for example, Divine is a fair trade chocolate company that gives profits to local farmers in developing countries. Now, one possible problem of fair trade is that obviously the product costs more money, so therefore it might not be possible to sell fair trade products everywhere and in large amounts. And secondly, not all of the money does go to the farmer. Some of it will go to the supermarkets, the shops that are selling it. In fact, most of the money will still go to the shops that sell it. Now, the sixth strategy is industrial development. And this is the idea that a country is better off moving from raw materials, so selling raw materials such as vegetables, to selling manufactured goods such as cars and phones. And that's because selling manufactured goods gets more of a profit. So therefore a country can improve their development by selling manufactured goods rather than vegetables. And this is something that's worked for China um, because they've become the workshop of the world because they produce so many manufactured goods and get the profits from it. Now, one problem is that some countries, by stopping um, selling raw materials they, and encouraging industrial development, they can actually make themselves vulnerable to exploitation by large transnational corporations who might come in and take all of their natural resources. Right, here we are. This is the last one of the seven. So number seven is microfinance loans. And this is where a small loan is given to somebody um, and it's someone who can't afford to start up their own business usually. And this money will allow them to start their own business. So it could be the example I've got here, which is this bank, which gives women or some women in Bangladesh $200. And that allows them to buy a mobile phone, which they can then um, hire out and charge people to use. Sim another example could be just giving farmers a small loan, which they can buy seeds with, and they can then grow crops, which they can then feed their families and gain a living from. Without that small microfinance loan, they wouldn't have been able to do that. So this is obviously really successful at a local level because these farmers or these people who have benefited um, can really you know, get a get better quality of living and a, and a livelihood from this loan. The, the negative is that these loans will eventually need to be paid back and they're only useful on quite a small scale because not everyone will be able to get one of these loans. Um, 
However, people do feel a bit more empowered. You're giving people a responsibility to start up their own business. So it empowers them and makes them uh, want to succeed and improve their lives for themselves. So there you go. That is seven of the eight ways in which you can reduce the development gap between the richest and the poorest countries in the world. What's the eight one that you ask? That is the one that we looked at in terms of reducing the development gap through tourism in Kenya. But I know you saw it on that one, so you're all fine. That's all.